Now that we've talked a bit about the structure and functionality of the phaser, let's talk about its key methods. And as you can see, its interface, unlike cyclic barrier, unlike countdown latch, is much more complicated. There's a lot more methods that it defines. If you recall, the cyclic barrier had basically one method, await, and the countdown latch had kind of two methods, await and countdown, and the phaser has gobs and gobs of method, uh, methods. Fortunately, many of these methods are rarely used in practice, so it's kind of like the, the upside-down airplane stamp. It's not a common thing. The constructor is used to create a new object, which has an initial phase number of zero, so it kind of starts at the initial phase, kind of like the initial cycle. Um, the constructor specifies, this, this constructor, the one that takes the parties parameter, specifies the number of parties that are needed to advance to the next phase. So that's a bit like the cyclic barrier. Remember, you give a parties flag or parties field as a parameter, and then that many parties have to await or arrive in order for you to be able to move forward. The number of registered parties dictates when the phaser can advance to the next phase. So it's kind of like the, the work unit. You might say, you know, we, we need seven roofers to roof. And when the seventh person shows up, then they can all start. Uh, that actually might not be the way you'd really do it in a work site, but let's say that that's what we're doing it in this work site. Maybe they have to carry some heavy beams or something, and they need everybody to be there to start. This constructor, however, is optional, since parties can always register later, so they don't have to give an initial count. With the Java phaser, the number of parties need not match the number of threads. It's, it's more flexible. The constructor doesn't specify any parties initially. This, this, this constructor does not specify any parties initially. And instead, it requires the uh, thread that uses a phaser constructed with this kind of no-op constructor to register with the phaser instance before it's actually going to be used. Here are some of the key methods that are involved. You can see there's a whole bunch of them, and they're used to register, synchronize, and terminate the phaser. So these methods are used to add unarrived parties to the phaser. So this basically says, um, it's, it's kind of like saying, I pledge to show up at the work site today. You know, register is kind of like that. And you can either register one thing at a time, or you can register a bunch of parties at a time. Again, that's what dictates when you can advance. There's a bunch of methods that are used to arrive, await advance, and or arrive and await advance. Um, and there's some flexibility that's provided by this, although as we'll see, the most common one of these is arrive and await advance. So arrive arrives at the phaser, but doesn't block until the other parties arrive. So it's kind of like, I'm here, but I'm going to go out and smoke a cigarette, or I'm going to go you know, get a Coke or something like that. I'm not going to wait till everybody else shows up. It returns the, um, phase, the arrival phase number, or it returns a negative value if the phaser has already been shut down. This method isn't very commonly used. There's another method called a wait advance, which will block until the phaser advances from the given phase value. Now, this will return immediately if the current phase is not equal to the given phase. You have to give the phase you think that this actually is. Remember that arrive returned the phase number, and wait advance takes a phase number. You'll see how that gets used in a second. This method is also rarely used. So what method is used? The most common method is arrive and await advance. And what this does is it arrives at the phaser. It says, I'm here, you know, I'm ready to do my work, and then it'll block until the other parties arrive. So it'll wait for everybody else, wait for, wait for the rest of the workers and the work crew to arrive. This is equivalent to await advance arrive. So remember, arrive returns, it says, I'm here, and it returns the phase number, and then it passes that to await advance, which says, all right, I'll, I'll wait till everybody else shows up. So arrive and await advance is like calling these two methods together. And that's by far the most common thing to do. And it's very similar to await on a Java cyclic barrier. So if you call await, await is kind of like, hey, I'm here, and I'm going to wait until everybody else shows up. 
So arrive and await advance is kind of the same thing. And I'll show you some examples of how to use arrive and await advance shortly. There's also kind of a wacky method called arrive and deregister, which says, I'm here, but I'm going to deregister myself so that any other, um, so, so that I'm not included in the count of parties that need to be waited for in order to advance to the next phase. This reduces the number of parties required to advance in future phases. And I'll, I'll show you the use case for this shortly as well. Um, it's usually used by the main thread that wants to block everybody when they'd all, they all start up, but then when it's done, it wants to say, okay, I'm here, and don't include me henceforth. So as it says, I said, it's often used by the party that controls the initialization of a phaser. And then we have the on advance hook method. This is interesting. This is a hook method that performs an action upon pending phase advance. So this, this method is a bit like the barrier hook, barrier action that's available in a cyclic barrier, although it has a few other semantics associated with it. So this method is invoked upon the arrival of the party that advances the phaser. And what that means is that the last party to show up, that's the one that will make things move to the next phase. And this method will be called before the advance takes place. So it's, like I said, it's kind of similar to the barrier action on a cyclic barrier. Um, in the sense also that the other threads will be locked or you know, will be suspended when this method runs. This method can also be used to initiate termination of the phaser by having it return a true value. So as you see here, if on advance returns true, it says, please go ahead and shut yourself down. And by default, as you can see here, the default implementation of on advance says, if there are no registered parties, shut yourself down. There's no sense running if nobody's registered to receive these callbacks. OK, so those are the key methods in the phaser. I, I suspect that even knowing what those methods do doesn't really shed much light on how to use the phaser. And that's one of the things that makes it complicated. It's hard to understand its semantics just by knowing the methods it provides. So of course, to remedy this, we're going to talk about an example application or two.